He lied his back teeth out to say that God taught him. And so the focus would be upon him. Him, the Pope. <laughs> Again, you see, he's the Pope. He's the Pope. It's a spirit of popery all the time. So always going back to picking popery. The spirit of popery was with the Campbells, with the Charles Taze Russells, the Joseph Smiths, the Ellen G. Whites, and so on and so on and so forth, okay? And pseudo-Protestantism has the same. You don't! Well, sorry, but you're not supposed to challenge the pseudo-Protestant ministers. If you challenge their authority, if you challenge their doctrine, you are out. They will tell you to clear off. They won't answer you because they themselves are right. Nobody else is right but them. All scripture, they are declaring, is of their own interpretation. Their private interpretation. Just like every other heretic. Hmm? And of course, Dory then started to send out tracks with this new wine teaching. Slowly, gradually. He didn't want to do it in a rush. He said that the people would be upset, would reject it, if it's done in a rush, if it's openly thrown at the people. So we'll do it slowly. A few tracks here, a few mentions there. And gradually and gradually, when he'd got the people... familiar then he could go full sway and one of the one of the schisms was over this by the way that the Plymouth brethren as they became known because they were in Plymouth okay was that the gospel as they taught the gospel was being neglected for Darby's new wine teaching, okay, of dispensationalism. And rapture. And eventually they split. And they split. They had the open brethren and the closed brethren, okay. Hmm? Darby never got away, you see, from the spirit of the um, Anglican Church that was attached, as it is, to the pit of hell. It's not, it's not a question. The Anglican Church is not a question. And it doesn't matter what <coughs> pseudo-Protestant ministers say. It doesn't matter what they say. We just ignore what they say. When they turn around and say, oh, yes, it is. Well, I know some good people in it. I don't care. Who are you? Oh, I'm the Pope. <laughs> I'm the Protestant Pope. Are oh, you now? Because eh? that's what they're saying. They might as well say it. Because they're saying it by what they're doing. By the, saying that, oh yeah, I have decided that this, this person here uh, is a Christian in, the, in, the, in this church. No, he's not. You provide evidence. I don't have to. Why don't you? Because you're the Pope. You're the Protestant Pope. You need to provide evidence. And I need to provide evidence. If I say something, well, not you. Oh no, you're you're above evidence because you're infallible. <laughs> right? Now then, Dolby went on to declare, like the rest of them in the day and in that day and age, that he was exclusively speaking with God. That God was speaking with him. That he was honoured by God with this and God was teaching him this, that and the other. Dispensationalism, the rapture, the Daniel seven weeks, and tribulation. Okay. All the rest of it that he didn't teach Jesus Christ. <laughs> he didn't teach Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ didn't teach it. Neither did the apostles. Neither did the old... The, the Elijahs and Je Jeremiahs and Isaiahs, they, they didn't teach it. Hmm? Was unknown to Noah. <laughs> hey? Can you imagine going up to Noah in his day and saying, hey, how about this dispensationalism? What? But there was two dispensations, one of Jews, one of Christians. 
와? <웃음> 에이? 어, 아줌마네? 에이? 어, 킹 데이비드, 어, 솔로몬? 어, 에즈레? 마라카이? 하나? 조브? 하스템? Did they ever preach two, two, two dispensations? Did they ever preach the rapture? Did they ever preach millennialism? Did they ever preach anything that all these false denominations have come up with? No, they didn't. Not even Jesus Christ ever mentioned it. But what these false denominations do with Jesus Christ, because they own a different Jesus Christ, is misinterpret the scriptures because they're not with Jesus Christ if they were with Jesus Christ plainly because Christ is the truth they would see the truth they, they, they'd see the scriptures in the truth that it is in but they, because they have a different Christ a Socinian Christ by the way when they come to scriptures <clears throat> they interpret the scriptures carnally hmm? that's all they do they read the letter of the word somebody's told them Oh, well, this means this and this means that. And so they're not only reading it as a dead letter, carnally, but they've listened to others how to accept that word as being this, this and this. And then what do the blackguards do when you come up to them and say, oh, well, you know, not taught. Dispensationalism not taught. And the rapture's not taught. What do you mean? The Baptist taught in scripture. You go to Thessalonians, blah, blah, blah. Go on then. And they'll read it. And right in front of them, it doesn't declare the rapture. It's nothing to do with the rapture of the saints. And you say, where does he say this? Where does it intimate this? It doesn't say it. Read the context. And they can't. Because they've got another Christ. They've got another teacher. And they're looking at it with carnal eyes. The book of the word of God, the book, the holy book, is closed to them. It's completely closed. They have not eyes to see, neither ears to hear. All they're doing is following their own within their own kingdom. Okay? And by the way, at this particular time... America was, as they said, drunk with millennial teaching. Absolutely drunk, staggering about with it. It was everywhere. Everywhere. Everything you touched. And then followed dispensationalism. That took a lot to actually to take in dispensationalism into America. But he got there. <coughs> he got there. He quickly got there. Predominantly, that all these new founders, all these new religions, were the Old Testament prophets of God. Do you realise that? Well, what do you mean? Did Elijah come back to life? Did Isaiah come back to life? No, no, no. No. You see, with all these persons... Standing up and saying, God has taught me this, God has taught me that, God has taught me the other, not to you, not to you down there, no, 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 to me. Hmm? Is bringing back the prophets, the dispensation of the prophets. These are the prophets of God. <clears throat> and we, we are not to understand anything except for the prophets of God which goes against what Peter said in the Acts of the Apostles and of Paul and all the rest of the disciples and apostles see these, these prophets of God never ceased according to these people because these are the people in the 1800s that have restored that system. They've gone beyond Pentecost. <laughs> They're mad. Absolutely mad. In the sense that there is no law and order with them. Where there's no law and order, there's madness. Madness? Mayhem. They're speaking out of their kingdom. So one moment 
there, referring us back to Pentecost, and at the same time, they're saying that they are the prophets, therefore they're going beyond Pentecost to the former testament. And John Nelson Darby was the same. John Nelson Darby and the Smiths and the Charles Taze Russells and the Helen G. Whites and the Joseph Smiths and all the rest of them, the Tozers, and even up to our present day with the Lloyds, the Paisleys, the Billy Grahams, and they're all treated as prophets of God of the Old Testament. All they do is ignore the word Old Testament. They just say prophets. There is no prophets. If there were prophets, Paul would be a prophet. Peter would be a prophet. It was all levelled at Calvary. The book of Joel was fulfilled. That we should dream dreams, prophesy. Everybody was levelled. The prophetic ministry was sealed up and the last persons to speak were the apostles of God. And after that, when the word of God had been settled in this earth as it had been settled in heaven, that was it. That was it. Okay, so we have John Nelson Darby, ex-solicitor, joins the Church of Ireland, comes out of the Church of Ireland, joins himself with the Brethren in Plymouth, or Brethren as they were called. Okay, then there's the accident in 1827. Given a book by Edward Irving to read, a book written by the Jesuit, a Jesuit. He spreads those lies in the name of God, saying to people that he's inspired of God, like the rest of them. And of course, he then. adds to those doctrines and eventually of course he split the brethren in two. You see B.W. Newton detested Darby and Darby detested B.W. Newton because Newton although he was godless as Darby was godless saw Darby as the Pope. He said he were the Pope. He's, he's nothing but a picking Pope. Well, I'm not going to have that. Because anything that anybody said to Darby or questioned, even if you questioned Darby, it's a, a you don't question me. I'm inspired of God. You don't question me. And of course the people left off questioning. All these newfangled doctrines from the Church of Rome through Emmanuel Lecunza split the whole lot. Newton said, right, you're the Pope. You know, you've anathematized me because I'm arguing with you and the two split. And of course, Newton went with the open side, the inquiring side, the side that inquired about things and Darby went off with his side, who followed like benighted papists to their Pope. And so you got the closed brethren without the penguin suits. Right? Of course, the closed brethren, you, you, you can't have any relationships in, with this world. Oh, if your brother or your sister's not a, not a brethren, that's it, out. I have no association with you. Man die, man's dying on the street. Can't touch you. You brethren? Oh, you brethren? Oh, 
Hang on a minute. You closed weather no open. Open. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> I can't have any dealings with you. Okay. And so it is that dispensationalism came from Romanism. Okay, we're going to deal with this again because um, we can't get away from it with Edward Irving himself. Okay. So, two more things. It is a misconception and a misteaching that Darby is the founder of the Brethren Movement. Okay? It is also misinformation that Darby created dispensationalism. He did not do so. He copied it from Romanism as he copied the rapture from Romanism, as he copied Daniel's seven weeks and the, the great tribulation from Romanism. It was all from Romanism. And secondly, one other thing, or sorry, thirdly, one of the things that J. and Darby disagreed with, and he was furious over, absolutely furious. You say to him, in his day, Christ died for all. <gasps> Woof! That's heresy, he used to cry. Heresy from the Church of Rome. That's Arminianism. Church of Rome. No such thing as universal salvation. It's the elect. Could I ask you, Mr. Darby, how you got into Christianity? How did you get into... Um, a profession of Christ by decision <laughs> so Christ died for everyone because you made your decision you see if Christ died for his church his church doesn't make the decision. Christ died and justified his church. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. Justified them collectively. Paul says when I died. Sorry. I am crucified with Christ. How could Paul be crucified with Christ? Christ, Christ died. Paul wasn't there. Paul didn't attach himself to the body of Christ. Huh? Eh? I am crucified with Christ. If ye be crucified with Christ, it says to the Colossians, and he says to us, if ye be crucified with Christ, we were, we were, not, we were not with Christ. He's saying it to the church. He's saying it to everybody that constitutes the church. If ye be crucified with Christ, if ye be risen with Christ, look upon those things that are above. So therefore, commitments can't come into it. Election comes into it. You have just undermined election. And you are with, therefore, universal salvation because you've got the universal term that involves universal salvation. Commitments. You decided to take Christ. No, you didn't. Oh, sorry, you did, but that doesn't save you. Because how can you, your decision, attach itself to Christ? Christ is dead and lives living. He died once for all for us. And he now he is alive once for all for us. The third day he arose. How can your commitment go back to Calvary? <laughs> Either you're in the vine or you're on the outside of the vine. Commitments are on the outside of the vine. And they fall off. Eventually fall off and are gathered and burnt in the oven. You have to be in Christ. So, Mr. Darby, weren't it? You're not even a Christian. Neither was Newton. And he fell out with Muller. Woo! He castigated Muller. Now, Muller wasn't a Christian, of course. That's another one we must get into. Muller looked like the devil. He had eyes flashing like the devil. Eh? Oh, he. Makes you cringe. 
But um, neo-evangelicalism has written up this fantastic story of a man who <sighs> was sold out for God. All right. But he called Newton a heretic and he called uh, Muller a heretic and he, he cast out Muller saying you, you mix him with heretics therefore you're a heretic. And so George Muller went with the open, continued, well, went with the open reverend. Okay. So, dispensationalism is the thing that came from the pit of Rome. Totally and utterly like the rapture from the pit of Imperial Roman Church. The Imperial Roman Church. May I just say, let us never forget. What really empowered the huge movement of false religions, false eschatology, shallow words within the 1800s coming out of the 1700s? What really gave impetus and what really gave impetus to prophetic meetings. <laughs>